Hey guys, welcome back to my channel for a mini DIY girl room makeover on a budget. Today I'm working in my toddler's room and I had a goal of creating a more cohesive aesthetic, but more importantly, freeing up some space in here to make it a more functional play area. I've got a ton of DIYs, new organization, decor, and a new room set up to share with you, but before I can share any of that, I needed to start by completely cleaning the room. It was a complete disaster. There was this laundry that was clean and just waiting for me to fold it and put it away. Sawyer does play in here every single day, so there's a mess on the floor, all of her toys needed to be put back where they belong and I really just needed to tidy everything to get it back to its normal state so that I could look around assess all of the changes that I needed to make or wanted to make and kind of work from there now typically when I share these DIY room makeovers I always start with a clean room in the beginning of the video I just empty it out and then we get right to work on those DIY projects but today I thought that it would be fun to do something a little bit different and interesting and show you the entire process start to finish and of course that starts with cleaning the space first or at least tidying it so that I can get that clear picture of what needs to be done and then start taking action steps to achieve that desired result so go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you are excited to go along this entire journey with me and really see the process start to finish for how I complete all of these makeovers and we are just going to power through cleaning up this space space and then I will kind of take a little look around, assess all of the changes that I want to make and empty the room so that I can get started on bringing that vision to life. I'm pretty sure that this is the third time that I am doing a makeover in Sawyer's room and I'm anticipating that I'm probably going to get some comments and questions about why I continually revisit the same space instead of moving on to a different room or a different space to make over. And there's actually a couple of reasons for that. So for one, I had to do this room in baby steps just because my budget didn't allow me to make all of those changes all at one time. And it's like that for a lot of projects I do around my house house and there is absolutely no shame in that. I'm only sharing just because if you are in that same boat where you'd love to do some DIY renovations or make over a room in your house but you just have to be patient with your budget, maybe do it little bits at a time or save for long periods of time to be able to tackle it all at once, that is totally fine, absolutely acceptable and you are not alone in that. I plan my budget the same way and plan the projects around my home the same way. So when I did the first makeover in her room, it was only half finished and when I did the second makeover in her room that was going to be the final one or so I thought which leads me to the second reason why I am revisiting this space for a third time sometimes when you complete a makeover or some DIY renovations you start to realize that it's not quite as functional as you wanted it to be or that the changes that you made just don't quite work for what you want that space or that room to be. And that's pretty common as well. So it's okay to have to tweak things, make some small changes or make major changes if it's really needed. This room is absolutely beautiful as far as the aesthetic. It 100% speaks to Sawyer's style and her personality. And we all love and appreciate that about her bedroom. However, it just was not as functional because there was so much furniture in here that was taking up floor space 
space, which she didn't have a lot to begin with. And so it was kind of cramped for her when she would want to play in her bedroom, especially when she wanted to play with Kinsley or play with a friend. There just was not enough room for them to have the best time possible. And so that meant that I needed to make some changes to the layout and the design of the room. Okay, I know that probably seems so excessive that I just basically emptied the entire room, but I do have a method to my madness. <laughs> so most of that furniture we were going to be taking out of here anyway. We really want to free up some space in this room and not have wall-to-wall -wall furniture. That way there's just more of a play area for Sawyer to be able to enjoy her room. But also I have this rug that I found on Facebook Marketplace. It's a large area rug and I originally got it over a year ago because I wanted to use it as a layering rug out on our back patio and unfortunately it just wasn't the correct size or shape to layer with the other rug that I have out there so we weren't able to use it for that but I just had a feeling that eventually I would want to use that rug and I would know exactly where I would want it and it would be perfect and it just dawned on me the other day that it would be perfect in Sawyer's room so I'm going to bring it in here but I wanted to carpet clean it with my Hoover first just because for one, it was a Facebook Marketplace find, so I'd want to clean it anyway, and also it's been in storage for over a year, so I just wanted to be as fresh as possible for her, but there's no way to really do that without moving the bed and the bed frame and all of that, so that's why I did all of that. We're not going to be replacing her bed frame or anything like that, but I just wanted to make sure that I could get her rug clean, so... I actually have my Dyson in here now and I'm going to vacuum really well the carpets first and then I'll bring that area rug in and hoover it and get it all nice and clean and fresh for Sawyer to have in here and be able to play on it. Anytime I am doing one of these room makeovers, as soon as I have the room cleared out, I always like to completely vacuum the carpet and usually I'll go over it a first time, just normal vacuuming, and then I'll empty the vacuum canister and go over a second time with some slow vacuuming for a second pass to make sure that I'm really sucking up all of the dirt and debris from all of the crevices of the room that are typically covered by furniture, organization items, and decor. It's just so rare that we ever get the opportunity to have a completely emptied room or space to clean in and so I always like to take advantage of that and do some of those deep cleaning tasks that I typically wouldn't be able to but once I had the carpets all vacuumed I wanted to bring in that new rug and get it positioned pretty much how I thought that it was going to stay in Sawyer's room and have it all laid out flat so that I could work on getting it as clean as possible since I had gotten it off of Facebook marketplace and and it had been in storage. I did do two passes with the vacuum, one just vacuuming normally and then that second pass doing some slow vacuuming to make sure I was getting up as much dirt as I possibly could with the vacuum cleaner. I did the same thing on the carpets but I only showed one set of clips for each just because I did not want the footage to become redundant or boring but just know that I always recommend doing normal vacuuming and a second pass slow vacuuming before you do any kind of deep carpet cleaning for the best results. This is definitely taking up way more space in here than I thought that it was going to. I hope it all ends up working out in the end. Of course I had seen how large it was before and seen the rug laid out but I think I was just overestimating how large Sawyer's room was. I didn't think it would take up this much space but I'm still gonna go ahead and clean it, let it dry and then I think I'll probably tuck it under the nightstands there just to kind of round everything all of the furniture together into one space and hopefully that will let it work better in the room i guess i mean worst case scenario it just doesn't look good it doesn't work and i'll take it out of here but i at least want to try first because i do really love this rug i'll show you guys a close-up it is just so beautiful so it is just this tan color and I think it's coming up pretty true to color on the camera and then you can see this beautiful braided texture I just think that it is so pretty and it is an indoor outdoor rug so it'll lay a lot nicer on top of the carpet than that shag rug was because 
it was just bunching up all over the place so there's still some like little bunches around and that's just because it hasn't been laying flat very long so it still needs to relax a little bit but I think it'll end up looking really beautiful in here. I found this wooden bookshelf on Facebook Marketplace for $5 and I want to use it to replace Sawyer's current shelf. This has more actual shelves to it than her current one so I'm excited about that. Plus it's not quite so wide right here which means that it'll be a little bit more space saving so we'll be able to store more on it but not take up any more space. It's also solid wood so it will paint a lot better than her last one. There are very obvious paint drips and things like that and it's just, it looks fine on camera but in person it's just not the best. So for $5 I couldn't pass this up. I'm just going to be using this Apple Barrel brand white chalk paint. This is from Walmart and it's only $4 for this 16 ounce bottle. And then I have some brushes here. I think they're like $2 for this three pack. So I'm gonna wipe this down and then start painting it. I know it'll take a couple of layers of paint so it'll take me a few hours to do but for five bucks, I couldn't say no. Like I said before, I am going to wipe down this entire bookshelf really well before I start painting it. And you will see here in a minute that it was absolutely necessary. This thing was so dirty, even though it didn't look like it was. I was kind of a little bit shocked, so I thought I'd go ahead and show you my rag just to show you how necessary this step really is. Anytime I am refinishing a piece of furniture, I always am sure to clean it really well before I start on anything else. And then of course, if you are using an acrylic paint, a cabinet, paint or a wood stain you would want to go ahead and sand down all of the surfaces make sure they are nice and smooth and then wipe them down one more time i am using chalk paint so sanding the surface was not necessary chalk paint and flat finish paints are usually very good at adhering to almost any kind of surface with minimal prep work which is why i enjoy using them so much However, I will say that when you are using a paint like this, you need a lot of patience because you're going to want to focus on layering thin, even coats of this product until you achieve your desired look and opacity. My friend Carrie is actually the one who inspired me to have a bit more patience when I am refinishing furniture and also inspired me to use chalk paint more often and be a little bit more confident in the work that I was doing. She has some great tips and tricks whether you are trying your first DIY furniture flip or if you are a seasoned vet and you're now constructing your own furniture, I would highly recommend her channel for all of the encouragement, confidence, ideas, and tips that you may need. She uploads a lot of furniture flips and DIY makeovers on her main channel, Carrie Lynn, but also has a cleaning channel as well if you are looking for some cleaning motivation or decluttering and organizing motivation. It's called Clean cleaning with Carrie. So if you are interested, want to know more information about how to use chalk paint properly, how to 
flip some furniture that you may have found, or if you are just looking for extra cleaning, decluttering, and organizing motivation, I will leave both of her channels linked in the description box for you. I highly recommend that you check them out, subscribe to her, and be prepared to start binging because she is absolutely wonderful and I know that you guys will love her just as much as I do. But anyway, I only showed you the first coat of paint that I put on this bookshelf because it took a long time and three layers of paint before I was finished and I didn't want that to be boring for you guys to keep watching the same thing over and over again. But I think because this chalk paint was so cheap, it just wasn't as high a quality as it could have been and didn't work quite so well. So even by the end of the third coat, it wasn't looking its best. But I did come up with a hack to fix that that I'll go ahead and share just in case you run into the same issue. Okay, so we've got three coats of paint on here and it's looking a lot better than the first coat but it is still pretty patchy so what I'm going to do is even it out with some spray paint I'm going to use this Krylon satin white I already had this in my shed so I just pulled it out and the satin finish is going to be good anyway this way I won't have to wax it or put any polycrylic or anything because it will have a satin finish which will make it easier to clean the matte chalk paint is really difficult to wipe down so this is going to kill two birds with one stone hopefully it evens out the paint enough and it will be looking beautiful by the time i'm done Using this spray paint ended up being a great decision and a really good hack for if you are struggling with your chalk paint projects and running into the same kind of problem. I used about three quarters of the can and sprayed an even thin coat on the entire bookshelf and it absolutely evened out all of those splotchy paint areas that I was talking about and did a great job of sealing it and creating this beautiful satin finish. So it really did kill two birds with one stone. It evened out all of that paint splotchiness and sealed the project so I didn't have to go in with any polycrylic or wax when I was done. It just turned out so beautifully. I also picked up this little unfinished wooden treasure chest from the arts and crafts section at Target. It's actually pretty large and I just know that Sawyer is going to love this. She's going to have so much fun hiding little toys and trinkets in here and I am not going to leave it in this unfinished wood. Instead, I pulled the spray paint out of our shed. This is the Krylon Color Max in the matte sweet fig color. This is left over from when I painted the shelf in her closet and her nightstands and then I have this Krylon Color Max in metallic copper, and this is the color of all of the hardware and her lamps in her room, so I'm gonna take the hardware off and spray them with that. This little treasure chest ended up being such a hit with Sawyer. She absolutely loves it and plays with it every single day. So if you have a toddler who is really into imaginative play, then I would highly suggest you pick one of these up from your local Target. I'm sure they also have them at Walmart and craft stores, but I just got mine from Target. They are always in the craft section there. It's not a seasonal item, so I'm pretty sure that you can get them whenever you want, and they're so easy to customize. So it is the next day and I'm just about to make up Sawyer's bed but before I do that I wanted to share the haul with you guys of everything I've been collecting over the last probably four to five months in preparation for this little mini makeover bedroom refresh whatever I've got going on here. I knew I wanted to add some things and change some things with the aesthetic of the room, but I also really wanted to find ways to free up some space, get some of the furniture out of here, and just make it a bit more functional for Sawyer as a play area. So 
yeah that's what I had in mind when I was picking up all of these items but the first few are purely decorative they're actually for this circle shelf that's up here which has been such a struggle for me if you've been watching her bedroom makeovers then you know I've really struggled with it but I picked up this little natural wood rainbow from the Target craft section and I thought I was gonna paint it at first but I decided not to I'm just gonna leave it that way I think it's interesting and then also some of these little coasters from Hobby Lobby Spring Clearance. I actually just picked these up the other day and they match the placemats that I have on her wall as kind of like a DIY basket wall. So I'm really excited to be able to tie in that aesthetic. I also got this little bud vase and this little cheetah jar also from Hobby Lobby, part of the spring clearance. And I'm hoping those will be some cute little knickknacks on that shelf. I picked up four of these seagrass baskets from the Target dollar spot. They were originally $3 and this was part of the spring collection. We picked them up when the spring collection went on clearance so we got them for 30 cents each which was a steal and I've just been holding on to them ever since. And then I also got this Pillow Fort brand Sunrise Wake Up Light. Sawyer has a really bad habit of waking up ridiculously early, like sometimes 3 a.m. and not understanding that she should go back to bed. So I was hoping that this would help. It lights up at the alarm clock time, which can then signal to her, like if it's lit up, it's cool to get up, to like wake up and get up. And if it's not lit up, then it's time to sleep still. So I'm hoping that's gonna help with that. I know a lot of parents and children struggle with proper sleep patterns and things. So I'll keep you guys updated if that works for us. I also got this little like rail hook thing. It's also the Pillow Fort brand and I'm going to be hanging these baskets from it with some toys in there. The idea was that I would be able to declutter that little toy chest that she had and instead hang those toys in those baskets on the hook to get them up off the ground so there's more play space for her. I did get two of them. There's another one here, but I'm not sure if I'll have to use both. I just wanted to have both just in case. And then I also got these baskets. This one is kind of shorter and chubbier. And then I have a taller one. And my plan is to use one for all of her stuffed animals and dolls and then one for all of her dress up items so I can kind of condense those items and um, just save some space that way as well. And then oh, <laughs> I also found this sheet set on clearance months ago. This is actually the same brand. It's the Opal House brand. It's the same brand and pattern as the quilt that she currently has. And she loves that quilt. I love that quilt. And so I thought it was really cool if we could get her the matching sheets to go with it just to add to the aesthetic of the room. And we actually found them on clearance for 70% off. So they were originally 35 and we got them for like $10. And that was a steal that we couldn't pass up. And then the last thing is this Pillow Fort brand. It's a bed canopy, but I plan to use it in the corner of her room with her little reading chair thing. And it's going to be like a play fort, reading fort area. So I just thought that would be fun and add some interest to her playtime. But we also found that on clearance. It was unmarked clearance. And I saw it on, I think, Aubrey Swan blog on Instagram. She shares a ton of target sales clearance and unmarked clearance so she shared that on our instagram feed months ago and i went searching my local stores to find one and picked it up for just a few dollars but anyway that's everything that i have so now i'm going to stop rambling and start making this bed and getting this bedroom put together <laughs>
changing out those sheets was such a small thing to do but made a huge impact in creating a more cohesive aesthetic in this space and I just absolutely love the way that it turned out. But once I was done making up the bed, I'm just going to use these monkey hooks that work for up to 50 pound items and I'm going to hang this canopy over in the corner of Sawyer's room. This is technically a bed canopy, but I was not using it that way. I decided to hang it up in the corner and use it as kind of a play fort slash reading fort area and boy was this the perfect decision. It was such a hit for Sawyer and she absolutely loves this little space. She is constantly closing herself in there and reading stories to her dolls and stuffed animals or asking Kinsley if she wants to play in her fort. But once that was finished, I'm going to work on decor and that bookshelf. Your intentions are good. I walk back to my history into my own neighborhood. Lying for you, lying for you. Oh, but I can't get back. What can I do? What can I do? When your dream is gone. I don't wanna go back, back, don't wanna go back. If you are not with me. I decided to temporarily use these 12 pound command strips to hang up those peg rails that I had gotten from Target and I did end up using both of them so I'm glad I picked up two. Even though the peg rails came with hardware to anchor them into the wall, Derek and I just could not decide if we preferred them on this wall over here or if we preferred them where the bookshelf was. While we were trying to decide, we went ahead and used these temporary command strips just to live with it for a little while, see how it functioned, see what Sawyer preferred, and if we ultimately decide to keep them there, then of course I will use that hardware and anchor them into the wall. But if we decide that we don't like them there and we'd rather move them to the other wall, it will be a lot easier and I won't have any holes in the drywall that need to be patched or painted over. Even though I only made a few small changes to this room, they had such a huge impact and Sawyer is enjoying her bedroom more than she ever has. It definitely suits her needs and functions for her a lot better than it did before. If you are interested in seeing a full detailed room tour of this space, I have shared that over on my Patreon account, so I'll leave a link in the description box in case you are wanting to sign up for membership and view that content. But thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out with me today. I hope that this gave you a ton of ideas, tips, hacks, and motivation to tackle your own DIY project. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you aren't already, and I will see you in the next one.